uh, as I just said, the uh, resources are available to you if it's something that uh, maybe gets a little bit deeper than what uh, we would do here in our offices here at the SBDC. We can connect you to local resources we know are friendly to small businesses uh, and um, get you get you set up there so you're not uh, searching around and wondering who's the best solution for you as a small business owner. So let's get started on our topic for today, cash flow. Cash flow is king, as uh, was pointed out. And uh, without cash, uh, you're you're in a bad spot with a business. So let's talk about uh, managing that cash. So we're going to take this from a standpoint of uh, using a, a, a example business, a hypothetical, so to speak, and um, walk through what this means and how to pull this all together. So we're going to look at uh, uh, Chris's business here. Uh, she's uh, in business running a um, consulting firm. She's, she's looking at her numbers, she's trying to figure out, uh, you know, can she hire an employee? She doesn't have any bookkeeping or accounting systems in place at the moment, and, uh, but she needs that part-time graphics person uh, to expand her business. So uh, it's come time for some decision-making, and she knows the numbers is something she needs to have. So... Part of what we do uh, at SCORE and SBDC is we help businesses get organized. We help businesses pull things together with regards to what's important, what do I need in front of me to make wise and uh, sustainable decisions within my business. And we teach uh, uh, several different classes, one of which is how to actually organize uh, a business uh, folder in the event of uh, needing to um, uh, respond to some form of an event, say a fire or um, a pandemic, those types of things that happen. But part of that book that we recommend, you see most of the items outlined here, part of it is a full set of financials. And one of the most important pieces of that financial picture is cash flow, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So this is one small part of a much larger um uh, portfolio, so to speak, of information that you should have readily available on your business uh, at all times. But uh, we're going to talk about primarily cash flow today. So one of the things that you're going to have to do if you haven't gotten any kind of numbers uh, in any order or anything at this point, you're not running on an accounting system, you don't have bookkeeping in place, you're going to have to move from that big pile of paper that you have on, on top of the desk or in the drawer. You're going to have to get that all organized, uh, you know, get, get it get to where you get your fingers on the information that you need to pull some of this uh, together that we're going to talk about today. And ultimately, we want to move you into a digitized um, uh, format so that you can have your numbers uh, not only available, but in real time so that you can make wise decisions about your business and keep it running um, in a more effective and efficient way. So if you're struggling with uh, pulling this together, you know, we can help you through these steps so that you're ready to answer some of the questions that we're going to talk about today with regards to cash flow. So as I just kind of indicated, you know, financial organization is the key to making good decisions. Numbers are important. I think we all understand that. You wouldn't be on this call today if you didn't think the numbers were important. They uh, impact our daily operations. They um, allow us to do long-term planning, short-term planning. There's just several different things that uh, impact your day-to-day -day operations that if you had the numbers, uh, you could do much more confidently, much more effective. A lot of people will um, say, well, I've got an accountant uh, or I have a bookkeeper and I'm good. But the fact of the matter is accounting and bookkeeping are two different things. Uh, bookkeeping is primarily going to be handled by you, the founder, most likely, or somebody on your staff. You're going to be the person who's inputting the data into a system. You're doing the invoicing. You're tracking down who's paying, who's not paying the bills, uh, balancing the checkbook. That's the bookkeeping aspect of things. But when it comes time to make strategic decisions based on the numbers and um, decide, okay, should I buy that new vehicle to put in the, into the business or should I lease that vehicle? Uh, should, I buy, should I invest in this inventory that I have right now or should I push that off until next year? Um, you know, how do I manage the tax aspect of my business? Those are the, that's the accounting side of the picture. So 
they are two different functions. You need to understand that because if you have a bookkeeper and you're thinking, yeah, I'm good. I've, I've got this, like this accounting thing figured out. No, you, what you have is, is hopefully a good tracking of the numbers, but you're probably not making as strategic decisions on those numbers as you could if you had an accountant uh, to work with as well. So uh, just understand they're two different things. Uh, we also talk a lot about the different uh, digital methods of keeping track of the numbers and managing managing the cash flow. QuickBooks is the, the big fish in the pond when it comes to the software that is available out there these days. Um, QuickBooks Online pretty much is uh, the go-to choice. However, you, you do need to understand there are other choices, there are other options out there. And uh, although QuickBooks has been around long, a long time, they do it very well. They're, they, they are well connected with a lot of different systems out there, so it makes it easy to, to work with them. Understand that if QuickBooks isn't in your budget, uh, there, you might look to uh, Wave. There's another one out there, W-A-V-E dot com. You know, the, it, it'll produce and capture numbers uh, at no cost to you until you actually pick up the phone or send in an email and ask for one-on-one -on -one consultation help. So you can get the bookkeeping aspects for free and uh, get the accounting aspects uh, on a pay-per-use basis uh, if you use Wave. Uh, FreshBooks is another one we hear a lot about. A lot of folks use FreshBooks out there. Uh, not had any issues with that. So just understand that there might be other options out there for you if um, uh, budget is an issue. And you know, most, most of the time it is. So uh, take a look at your options. As far as the accounting aspects go, you know, now I'm talking in general. Now, when I say accounting, you know, I'm, I'm using the wider umbrella here. Uh, but accounting tracks the things that you might think. So maybe a few of the things that you're not thinking of, but you're tracking your sales, your expenses, how profitable your business is. And also, what does the business own? What do you have on the books as assets? What do you have on the books as liabilities? Those things that we owe. And therefore, having all of that information in our hands, we can also determine to some degree, what's this business worth? Uh, what does the business owe me as the owner uh, if, if I should transition out of it? And uh, all of that also uh, leans heavily on the cash flow, which is what we're going to jump into uh, right now. So when we talk about cash flow, we're talking about you know what's what's uh, what's the money in and what's the money out because as was said earlier, you know cash is king. If we run out of money, we're out of business. Uh, and if you're ever going to ask for additional money, go to the bank, go to an investor, uh, go to friends and family. You know, if you can't prove that you've managed the cash that you've had to this point, nobody's going to give you any additional cash. So ma being able to man manage cash flow and show that uh, you have good processes in place to do so will help you uh, obtain additional funds in the future should you need to do that. I've already said, you know, it clears up a lot of things with regards to the decision making and it allows you now to plan for the future, something like retirement. Uh, possibly selling the business, maybe bringing on another employee, adding additional equipment. This is no longer a, gee, I, I hope this works. This is more of a, okay, I've planned this out. I know that at a set period of time when I have a set amount of money that I can actually do this and it's not going to you know, poke too big of a hole in my boat and sink it. So <clears throat> if you want to move from being reactive in your business to being proactive, and running your business, you got to get a handle on cash flow. That's why this is so important. So there are a lot of impacts on cash flow. And a lot, folks don't always think of these as uh, impacts, but think about your invoicing practices. If you're running low on cash on a regular basis, ask yourself, am I invoicing fast enough? When you complete a job, uh, do you turn around to the client and hand them the invoice at that point? Do you wait a week? Do you wait a month? Yeah. Every day you wait beyond delivery of your product or service is one day that you are short of cash that you are owed. So make sure you're invoicing on a timely basis. Um, capital investment, as I said earlier, you, know, you might need a new truck. You might need additional software. You might uh, 
have a piece of equipment that you need to add. Uh, that's something you need to plan for. So therefore, you got to pull some cash out of what might normally be available for daily, daily operations. How you pay your bills and how you get paid uh, can also impact cash flow. You know, there's no harm whatsoever in a business owner saying, look, if, it, if that bill's not due until 30 days out, I'm going to pay it on day 28. That's, that's fine. That's, that's sound cash flow management. Don't pay it on day 31 or 32, but, you know, uh, pushing it out uh, as far as you can is good cash flow management. Uh, but also looking at your, um, your, your, in, your inbound uh, bills from your vendors, seeing if there's any kind of a discount maybe for paying it a little bit early, that is also good cash flow management is possible if you are having a really good month, you do have uh, solid cash in the bank account right now that maybe you could pay something early and actually reserve some of that cash. So be aware that there may be terms that you could no negotiate when you're paying your bills, and that might also add to your cash flow. Inventory, uh, if you're in an inventory heavy business, you should look at your inventory as though that is cash on the shelf. All those boxes you see in that picture right there, just picture the, all of those boxes full of $1 bills because that's really what it is. Until you can take that box off the shelf and get it in the hands of a customer uh, and convert it to cash, it's just tying up your cash. So um, understand that good, sound inventory management practices uh, should be something that you strive for as well. If you can't tell me what is your best selling product? What is your least selling product? What uh, the cost of, of delivery uh, of that product to your warehouse was? If you can't give me those details, you're probably losing out on some cash flow uh, positive practices. And uh, we need to look at that. Uh, the debt that you carry, uh, we are all experiencing a time uh, that we're not used to, and we're used to this pretty low interest rates over the la past several years. But now uh, we're seeing double digit uh, interest rates, and the cost of carrying this debt is uh, eating away at our cash flow. So, um, monitoring what you owe, what the terms on those uh, uh, debts are, and refinancing if possible or uh, paying off certain debts you know having a strategic plan for paying that debt off is also good cash flow management uh, skills also knowing what your profit and loss uh, margins should be uh, if you've never benchmarked your business to determine whether or not the profits and uh, whether it's gross margin or net uh, are in line with your industry you should do that um, we have tools here at the SPDC. If you come to us and say, I've got a business that does this, so we can pull up uh, industry reports and I can tell you uh, what those averages should be. I just uh, did one this morning for uh, a business plan that was in a, um, let's see, they were in a fast casual uh, restaurant and um, it was an 8% net was what the expectation should have been. And, um, you know, so we were benchmarked that business to see where they were so if you're sitting there and you're thinking gosh you know i'm, I'm turning five percent net that's that's pretty good well if we look up your industry report find out that the entire industry average is about 15 uh, it's not so good anymore so uh we need to we need to benchmark the businesses every now and then as well so knowing specifically where the money comes into the business and where the money flows out of the business is uh, very important. And by knowing those two, we can detect leakage. So if I come into your business and we sit down to do a cash flow analysis, one of the first things we're going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, show me total revenues for the month and show me total expenditures for the month. We're going to subtract those two, and I'm going to look at your bank account and see if that matches uh, your bank account. And if it does not, that means we're not tracking something. We're missing something coming in or we're missing something coming out of the business. And any, any amount we're not tracking is probably an amount that uh, we're not managing very well. So 
uh, we, we would track that down and uh, that in and of itself can improve uh, cash flow. And then obviously you want to have a positive cash flow. You want to get to the point where your business no longer needs you to feed it money in order to keep it going. Uh, you want to get it to the point where it can afford to pay you what you truly want to get from the business. You cannot do that if you can't get the business to a positive cash flow position. So uh, building value, building uh, your your paycheck is um, a, a direct result of, of building a positive cash flow position. And, you know, if you, as I said earlier, if you manage the cash well, you may be able to go out and get additional cash. Uh, or if you manage your cash well, you may eliminate the need to go out and get uh, additional cash. But uh, either way, uh, by managing it, you can get it through your profits or outside, outside sources like uh, investors or uh, possibly loans. So just visually, the things that I've been talking about to this point, um, what we're looking at here is, is uh, a graphical representation of what uh, cash flow could or, or may look like with your business. So you see in this particular example, the cash in for this business remains constant uh, across the board, but the cash out tends to go up over time, uh, over the four quarters here. And you notice that the gray line, which indicates our cash balance, our bank account balance, so to speak, if you are in this situation, you can see that's obviously going in the wrong direction. So if we are consistently earning the same amount of cash, but our expenses continue to go up, obviously we're going to eventually run out of cash and therefore be out of business. Uh, this is a, a little bit different example um, and uh, is a little bit better uh, scenario, but you can see here that we've got kind of um, converse uh, uh, situation here with cash in, cash out. You've got cash in going up over time. You've got expenses going down over time. And of course, uh, during the times that we have high expenses and low cash, we deplete our cash uh, balances. But when we level that out or increase the amount of cash in over expenses, we can then uh, replenish those cash balances. So that's just a visual representation basically of, of what I've been talking about. And you can actually produce these kinds of graphs and some of your um, uh, digital tools will give you this kind of a visual representation uh, if you've got the data in there anyway, that'll show you how your cash flow is going. So Going back to Chris's situation, you know, we want to find out, can Chris uh, afford to bring on a, um, a part-time graphics person? Uh, we've put together a tool here that we're going to use. Uh, I'm going to switch over to that now. We're going to um, use a tool that you can download. And in fact, this will be, uh, we're going to furnish a um, blank of this spreadsheet to you after the class. Uh, and this is just one of many tools that you can use and um, but we use this a lot uh, for several different reasons and in, in our work so um, let me just get this set up here uh, Dean can you verify that you can see the spreadsheet there yes all right so um, this is an excel spreadsheet there's nothing you know um, magical here this is all um, standard excel stuff uh, the most all of the formulas contained within it are add subtract divide uh, it's it's not anything you have to worry a whole lot about um, and we do protect the um, the uh, spreadsheet so that uh, it makes it difficult for you to blow it up uh, if you want to use it you can go in there and and do what you need to do and not worry too much about uh, messing things up. So when you receive the spreadsheet, you're gonna get uh, this uh, directions page. Basically, all you need to understand is uh, you're gonna be filling out the yellow or orange cells. And uh, you just ask yourself is, do I have a number that goes in that yellow or orange cell? If you do not, you leave it blank. Uh, if you do, you put in the number and you press on. All the rest of the cells will automatically populate for you so you don't have to do all of the math. So again, we're, we're um, doing this for Chris here, Apex Services. Put in your, your month that you want to show 
uh, that you're starting your, your projections on. And again, we're working on projections for the business. We're projecting our cash flow. So this is looking into the future. And um, this is obviously an older example. So um, you know, have a starting year here would be 2024 um, in, in our current status. Once you have that in there, then we can come in and we can take a look at where is the business? Where does it stand right now? If you were seeking a loan, you could set this up to uh, determine whether or not you can afford that loan and how much you actually need to accomplish what you want to accomplish. In this case, um, uh, Chris has uh, a vehicle, has an asset in her business of, of a value of about 35000 uh, She's uh, got cash in the bank there, uh, working capital on hand of $10,000. So um, she currently has uh, owner's equity of 15000 and that's the money that she's put into the business. And uh, she's getting a commercial loan here for uh, a vehicle up there at the top uh, that, that she's paying um, $438 a month on. So um, this just kind of, like I said, it outlines where does the business stand with regards to the cash that it has to work with now and any debt that it has on the books. Again, if you were seeking a loan, the loans would not be what's currently in force, but they would be the loan that you are seeking to get. And then we could determine whether or not the monthly payment works into your cash flow and allows you to uh, still be comfortable and operate the business. Um, from there, then we get into the payroll picture of the business. So we can put in how many full-time, part-time employees we are. If we're going to pay the owner on payroll, we can put the owner here. Most small businesses are uh, LLCs, single members, or small enough where the owner typically pays themselves with withdrawals, and that's what Chris is doing here. So she's not listed on the payroll. But uh, her, her uh, projections, again, she's projecting, can I afford to pay uh, with uh, a full-time and a part-time uh, employee and uh, me, the owner, still make money. So uh, this will outline a month-to-month -month, uh, payroll and uh, include things like your taxes and your workers' comp and so on. So it'll calculate uh, what payroll you can expect, uh, depending upon how you lay that out. And then the spreadsheet will automatically tell you for the next three years, because this projection is a 36-month period, tell you what the next three years of uh, experience will be on your payroll based on a, a particular uh, raise amount that you might um, put in there, uh, a one uh, or three or five or whatever your percentage per year is that you may um, offer as a raise to your full-time and part-time employees. And you see uh, Chris has that outlined there. So you can see what your total annual um, payroll is going to look like over the next three years. Project that out. Again, we're being proactive here. We're not waiting for this to happen. We're putting the numbers in. We're projecting out so that we can get a better idea of what might happen if we make this decision to hire this new employee. So now we get over here to our sales forecast. And this is where Chris has put in you know, what does she do to earn revenues and how does she do that? So she does consulting. Uh, product sales, and uh, she does some speaking gigs from time to time. And this this is what she charges for it. She charges uh, you know, four-hour session for a speaking gig. She charges by the hour for her consulting. No cost of goods associated with either one of those two, but she does have a cost of goods associated with the book that uh, uh, downloads that she's selling as a product. So that outlines the unit uh, sales for what Chris does. And then down here, we say, well, how many consulting services are we going to offer per month? 100 hours in this case, because we're selling by the hour. And how many products or books are we going to sell per month? 150 looks like uh, per month. And then how many speaking gigs will we have? It looks like she's doing about one a quarter. So that allows her to uh, outline her sales. Now, in this particular example, we've got a straight line average. That's not typically how you would do this. Every business is seasonal. It has a season. So you would have your high months and your low months uh, outlined here so that you had a much 
more true picture. And uh, the, the great thing is you, know, you get to come in and uh, tweak these over time as, as that season may change or you have a, a better season than you expected or a lower low than you expected. They, those can be tweaked along the way. The, so once uh, you set up... Earl, one, uh, yep. one thought. You know, um, <clears throat> when, when we start talking about uh, the business out on the horizon, like you know, what he's done, what Earl has done here is kind of level-loaded the consulting hours, right? Um, so, for example... Uh, Maybe it's not going to happen in July that we will have a uh, uh, an event there or when we move forward to uh, January and in in the fourth quarter, some of these things. So what what our challenge can be uh, is if uh, say, for example, if if, I still have to pay my help, but events are not going to happen in January, uh, November, or maybe July and December quite in that level way. Um, our cash will bounce uh, accordingly because I am I probably still have my cost of goods that I've bought books or... Um, I'm paying employees to organize things. Um, so that's where, like he says, the reality can be quite different. Um, and the impacts to cash um, will uh, will reflect that. Right. And you can also look at it from the standpoint of, okay, if I'm bringing on another person, that person should be bringing value to my business. They're not bringing value to the business to the point where they can actually pay for themselves. That could be a really rough situation for the business. So um, again, as you see in this example, we're straight line averaging um, all of the sales across the year. Technically, if I add another individual, say in May, uh, <clears throat> I would expect through productivity and additional efficiencies and possibly more sales, for these sales to start showing an increase somewhere maybe in July and August. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to be able to, again, project based on what you feel is the closest to reality. So, uh, so Earl, we, we have a question okay. from Stephanie. Perhaps this is a good point to ask this. Uh, <clears throat> she says, do you recommend any specific budget in percentages for a business that is just starting off? For example, 50% goes towards expenses, 20% towards taxes, 10% owners draw, and 20% to reinvesting back into the business. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I guess what she's saying is, I don't have all the answers right now, but should I consider some um, way to to budget myself forward? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's there's actually a couple of different ways that you could think about this. <clears throat> One, we can go back. <clears throat> excuse me. We can go back to the industry reports as I was talking about earlier, and I can say, look, your particular industry, your particular type of business spends X percentage of revenues on labor. They spend X percentage of revenues on leasing their location and so on. So we have those kinds of uh, data points available uh, that we can use. And of course, every business is going to be different with regards to that. Um, are there rules of thumb? Sure, there's some rules of thumb. I mean, if um, when we get to the expenses tab here in a moment, you know, one of the things on there is advertising and marketing. And when you're in startup phase, it, that's extremely important, but you're also extremely cash flow poor. So, you know, you really got to be creative with your marketing. And um, people ask me, well, how much should I allow for marketing? Well, usually a startup business is somewhere between a one and a 3% of revenues uh, as, a, as a marketing spend. 
does that mean you can you may spend more or you may spend less certainly but just rule of thumb that that's one number that exists but um, you know, you really got to take the businesses one one to one because uh, every business is different. Now, the other way you can think about it is don't think about what the business might do. Think about what the business has to do. So if you sit down and, and compartmentalize the business into large chunks and said, OK, the, I, as the owner, have to make. $50,000 a year. That's the income I have to make. If I can't make that income, then I got to go get a job. So $50,000 is what I need to make as the owner. And the particular business I'm running, maybe it's a consulting business. It doesn't have a lot of overhead uh, associated with it. Maybe it only costs $20,000 a year to keep that business open and all the operating costs, so to speak. So $50,000 I got to make, $20,000 that costs to run the business. That means this business has to make $70,000. Okay. And again, this is high level numbers. So there's going to be some other things that you'll need to toss into the mix, but high level numbers, I have to make $70,000. Well, what does this business look like? If it's operating at a $70,000 a year revenue stream, how many clients do I have to have? How much do I charge each of those clients? What do I have to earn per hour and so on? So you can work it backwards by thinking about what you have to do. Now, if you work it backwards and put into this spreadsheet what you have to do and, it, and you get it in here and it's all working and you look at it and you say, well, that's only two clients a month. I can do that in my sleep. Well, great. you got a model that you can expand on and not worry too much about, um, you know, uh, rocking the boat. But if you run this model on what you have to make and it comes back and it says, you have to have two clients per hour and that's not physically or, or, you know, realistically possible, then we got to rework the model because that's not going to work. So, yeah, I, I lean towards working it backwards over just getting a list of the percentages because you get the list of percentages, you're going to, you're going to come up with a model that might work, but it may not be, uh, a good fit for you and what you're trying to accomplish with the business. So uh, once we have sales in there, uh, again, the spreadsheet will forecast the 36 months worth of sales. You can tell the spreadsheet, oh, I think I'm going to grow my business each year by a certain percentage and uh, put those percentages up here and it will recalculate all 36 months as, as we uh, see here in, in the spreadsheet. You know, it calculates the years two and three out for you. Or if your business is much more uh, erratic than uh, just a standard across the year percentage, maybe, you know, you're, you're expecting to add an additional product line in year two, and that's going to increase your revenues tremendously. You can actually come in and edit these individual months here. So, but Chris has said, okay, 6% a year, I think is what my growth rate will be. And across the board, it, it automatically uh, added that. The spreadsheet will also allow, and this is important to, for cash flow sake, it allows you to determine how you get paid. So if you're a business that gets paid maybe a portion of, of uh, what you invoice up front and then you get paid the balance at a later date or maybe you do the, you do the work or provide the product and you bill somebody which now sets it back 30 days for payment, you can set up the spreadsheet up here to where how much of your revenues are earned within 30 days. In Chris's case, 75% of our revenues are earned within 30 days. And then uh, the rest of her revenue uh, earnings are collected over a 60-day uh, uh, period, 20% coming in before 60 and 4% over 60. Uh, and she actually has a one percentage uh, allowance for um, uh, bad debt. So uh, that's money that she's never going to collect. So you can actually tweak the spreadsheet so that you can allow for slow pay if slow pay is something that's common to your particular type of business. And unfortunately, it is common for a lot of different businesses. Um, so that's there. That'll help uh dial in that cash flow a little to, to where it's a more precise. 
most of the rest of this tab, you're probably not adjusting unless you're adding additional asset purchases over the three years. Chris is not adding anything else. She's not adding in, she's not buying any additional trucks or equipment or anything like that. So we don't have to add any of those. So here's the expenses tab that I was talking about. And this is really the last tab that you have to fill out. Um, after this, everything is pretty much done for you. But this is what something you're probably more uh, familiar with. This looks more like a household budget or a profit and loss uh, statement uh, syncs up to this pretty well. These are all the expenses that it takes to keep the lights on, keep you operational as a business. And there's that advertising line I was telling you about that uh, is typically 1% to 3% for a startup business. Um, and then each month we outline what we spend on each of these expenses. Now, the one thing you don't want to do in this particular on this particular uh, sheet is to average the cost of an expense. So as an example, let's say your insurance is $1,200 a year. You don't put $100 every month to budget for a $1,200 payment at the end of the year. You actually put $1,200 in the month that you will pay the expense. We want to make sure that the expense is outlined so that the, the, at the time that we pay it, the amount that we pay it, that's when it actually hits this spreadsheet because that's how your cash flow works. Uh, we don't typically um, pull things out over months uh, um, and then pay it. Um, but if you do, you can do that too. So um, all the expenses get outlined and of course spreadsheet will then project it over the next two to three years. You can put in percentage increases over the years if that applies to your expenses because, you know, expenses always go up, right? They never come down. So we you typically just add a three-ish percent uh, increase year over year on that. Hey, Earl. Uh, yeah. Quick question. Um, back to the expense and, and the scenario with the insurance. So let's say we're here in January and I have, uh, um, the, uh, insurance payment that, that accumulates and, uh, and is payable in June, mm -hmm. uh, does, does our tool here show what the demand for cash will be out at that time? Yes, that's actually the next tab. Great. So once we get all of these expenses in here, the next thing that we um, <clears throat> are shown is the actual cash flow of the business. So if you remember on the starting tab, uh, Chris said that she had $10,000 in the bank. Well, at $10,000 is where we start. That's what she has in the bank in January. She had sales that we add to that because that's now cash that we have available in that month of in a little over $8,800. So that's the money in. And then all the cash outflows are listed down here in this section. And uh, in this case, she had $10,139 of cash going out. So her net cash flow was $1,300 to the negative. She, she spent more than she brought in. However, she had money in the bank to help cover that $1,300 shortfall. So uh, that left her bank account now sitting at $8,600 uh, for the month of January. So she depleted her funds uh, by $1,300. That $8,600 then goes to the top of february and that's where we start in february same thing money in money out. how much is left at the end at the end of the month we actually came in a cash flow positive that month meaning we brought in more than we spent and now we're sitting on uh, a cash flow positive situation we added money to our bank account which overcame the deficit and then some by 187 dollars and that cycle continues month to month. So, Dean, what you were asking, uh, can we see how that, that payment of the expense uh, impacts future cash flow? You can see here is a good example. Uh, taxes are being calculated as $1,000 being due out here in uh, June. And we can see that, you know, that impacts our cash flow. 
didn't put us in a negative position, but it certainly took a bite out of the momentum that we had pulled together. So um, we're still sitting good, cash flow balanced, but we can look ahead. We can look to, the, to our uh, future and plan that out. Again, it puts you in a proactive position. You're no longer reacting to what comes in the mailbox. Uh, you're, you're actually planning this out. Um, so now we get to the question that Chris had, can I pay myself and hire those employees that I've got outlined? So we had the employees lay, loaded up in payroll. And here is the line where Chris begins to pay herself. So $3,000 a month is what it looks like starting in July. Chris wants to pay herself. If we look at that scenario, and we look at the cash situation, we notice that for the most part, we were going positive. We were on a positive trend. And then we started paying ourselves. And what happened? It went negative, 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 almost negative, 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 so on. So we now have put ourselves in a position where our cash bank balance is being depleted nearly every month. <clears throat> and, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out that if that trend continues, which we can see over here, it's continuing into years two and three, that we started 11,700 at the beginning of year two, we end the year two at $4,400, went from 44 down to 1,400. So basically we're about a month away from going out of business at that point. If we maintain a $3,000 a month draw for the owner, every single month and have those employees on on the books like we said so again this is an example chris is doing these projections and she's saying okay well that's not going to work mm -hmm. what are my choices right you can now go in and tweak the spreadsheet and say well what if i don't have a full-time and a part-time maybe it's two part-times what if i change my draw to two thousand dollars a month instead of three thousand and so on this allows you to model your business such that you can now make efficient and effective decisions that you know have the impact that you want moving forward. Now, yes, it's a spreadsheet. The world turns and things don't always work out the way we plan. But the idea here is you run this and you update it with your real data. Once you set it out for 36 months, you go back and you load real data uh, into the spreadsheet and it will automatically then adjust forward based on that real data and you get a much more precise picture every single month that passes. So um, that's kind of the gist of this tool for cash flow. Um, the, this, will, this also produces a uh, full set of financials. Uh, so you can get an income statement, a balance sheet. It'll calculate your break even. And it'll also do financial ratios to determine how healthy the business is. And that's, that's a tool that you can use with some of those databases I was telling you about earlier that we can benchmark your, your, um, your business against. So uh, I know we're running up against time, but I, didn't, I, I think you can see that under Chris's scenario, can she do it? She probably could, but she's going to have to change the model so that uh, it is it is more in line with uh, a more successful um, uh, execution of bringing that that other employee on. So let me just uh, pull up the last couple slides here, and we should be yeah. There's uh, uh, there's a quick question, Earl. Um, go ahead. Um, one person asks, uh, when first starting out, would you use something like this spreadsheet <clears throat> uh, in addition to a tool like QuickBooks? Uh, what, what do you think? Yes, yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, a lot of the tools have a uh, budgeting um, uh, tool. They have a um, projection tool and the like. And certainly if you're comfortable with those and, and can follow uh, those, by all means, use them. You don't have to use this spreadsheet. That's, as I said earlier, this is just one tool that you can use. 
But what I've found is, uh, for instance, I've been in business myself for over 20 years. I use QuickBooks pretty much all the time. Now I've switched over to Wave. Uh, um, they they have great tools, but it's hard sometimes to follow. Well, if I if I want to tweak that number right there in this budget, where do I go to do that? And that can be um, a chase that you don't <laughs> really have time to do. But if you have it on this spreadsheet, it's pretty straightforward where that number go, where you have to go to adjust that number. So I like the spreadsheet because it's simple. I know a lot of you are saying, gosh, it had 13 tabs. How can you say it's simple? But once you use it once or twice, this becomes second nature to you. And um, I prefer using it separate. So, yeah. So uh, then to tag on to that, the question is uh, so. Uh, you don't need this spreadsheet if you had QuickBooks. Is that right? Do you have to have it? No, but it, can you model the next 36 months is the question. That's If you feel like you can model the next 36 months using QuickBooks, great. Use QuickBooks, you're good to go. But if you can't sit down and realistically tell me how much money you have in the bank today and how much money you're going to have the bank in the next six months, then you might want to use a tool like this. Good. And uh, Thaddeus, uh, you asked how long before the spreadsheet is available, as I shared at the outset. Um, the presentation and the uh, spreadsheet will be available within 10 days. Um, once we uh, complete our, our tasks, uh, associated with the workshop uh, on the administrative side, but yep. it's likely uh, be much sooner than than ten days. Yep. And, so, and if you have some problem, uh, you can reach out to me. Yep. So just to close things out again, I just want to stress the fact that cash flow is just one piece of a larger picture. Your financial picture should uh, consider uh, all of the financial documents, the income statement, balance sheet. Uh, break even uh, and the cash flow all work together. Um, please don't run the business just on one statement. Uh, make sure you have all of those available to yourself. So once you have this in place, make sure you're reconciling your accounts monthly. Uh, I know reconcile is a four letter word to, for most of us. It's not a pleasant mm -hmm. task, but if you push that out longer, it just makes it worse. So just uh, knuckle down and uh, get that done on a monthly basis. Get an accountant. If you've been in business for over six months, you should have an accountant. Uh, I know they cost money, but in the 20 years I've been in business, I've never had one cost me more than they've saved me. So um, get an accountant, work with them. Um, make sure that you're using your numbers in your decision making. You th sit back in your chair and you think about how many decisions you make regarding your business. You ask yourself which one of them doesn't impact the bottom line. And I bet you won't find any. They all impact the bottom line to one degree or another. So make sure that you're using your numbers in your decision making. Um, make sure you're updating this notebook that we talked about earlier. Um, that's a different class, I know, but this being part of that, you want to make sure that you're keeping up to date financials in that notebook, the, that notebook that you're going to grab on your way out the door if, you know, uh, the building's on fire or whatever. Um, that's that's going to be invaluable to you. And then eventually, if you're doing all this on paper, you're doing this on an, on the Excel sh sheet, and uh, but don't have accounting, make sure that you get to the point where you can move this in, into QuickBooks, Wave, FreshBooks, something like that. And then always keep this stuff secure. This, this is your lifeblood of your business. Um, you you want to make sure that it's uh, protected. If you're storing it, uh, make sure you got backups and all of that good stuff. Uh, that's a different class as well, cybersecurity. Make sure that you've got it uh, covered. So with that, I will um, stop sharing. We, we can uh, go to uh, questions and answers. I know we're up against time, Dean, but uh, I'll let you close out. Sure. Uh, there is one question here from Henry Ferguson. Uh, when... <clears throat> When starting the business with the owner as a single employee, is there a simpler way to document what you are doing? Um, I'm I'm gonna take one shot at this, and I'll I'll let uh, Earl contribute as well. Uh, Henry, uh, here at Score, we have a we have a, a template 
Uh, it's called the Lean Canvas. Um, this template uh, is, is kind of the front end. So you're going to have a business plan. And that business plan is going to give a, start out with a narrative of what you are doing, what you attempt to do, uh, and how you're going to, as a single employee, grow the business. And, and you're, you're launching it off. Um, there'll be some basic numbers that you're going to want to know. Uh, and Earl touched on this, like, how much money do you want to to earn for this business? Um, what is what are some of the things that are going to cost you money? These are kind of the starting uh, stepping stones that uh, that you're going to go through, and perhaps that's what you mean by a simpler way to document what you are doing. Uh, that is where I would say uh, is your starting point. Um, if you want to reach out to me uh, later, um, my email address and everything is, is available uh, for the meeting. Um, and perhaps uh, Earl uh, would have uh, a comment as well. Yeah, the Lean Business Model Canvas is there to help you organize what the big, the big overarching uh, par parts of your business model look like. Um, from a number standpoint, there is a simpler version of this cash flow model that doesn't go into all of the, you know, payrolls and percentages and all of that. It's just one page that does twelve months, and that's it. Uh, it, it, you can use that to test a, a budgetary model for to just to see if the numbers work. Um, if I think about it, I will get that get a copy of that to Dean as well, and he can attach that um, when he sends out the others. Uh, but it it's just that's as simple as it gets uh, from a modeling standpoint. But if it were me, I got to see thirty six months because. Um, you can make anything work for 12 months <laughs> and it can crash and burn in a hurry and leave you uh, destitute on the corner. So <laughs> uh, uh, I would really encourage you to look at the 36 month model. Okay, great. Well, um, there are no other questions in the queue. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, especially thank Earl, uh, who is a wonderful resource uh, here in the upstate and uh, for folks who are all around uh, uh, the state and our, our uh, workshops get publicized uh, throughout the, uh, the Southeast. Um, and uh, thank you for your uh, comment, uh, Lee. Uh, great presentation, Earl. Thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, with that, I will wrap up and um, thank you, everyone. Uh, stay tuned. We've got more workshops in the uh, in the queue. Thanks so much. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.